Hi everyone, Brianna Dignard here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the biggest workhorses in our body, the human heart. Your heart is a muscle and the muscular system of the body is very important and provides a lot of functions from you know pumping blood and getting oxygen out your body to allowing us to walk and to run. All muscles work by contracting and relaxing and in turn pushing and pulling against something that allows it to work. So for example, my elbow can bend because there are muscles in my arms that are pushing or contracting and relaxing against a joint in my elbow, allowing it to move. Hey, my microphone. So your heart is also a muscle that is contracting and relaxing. Your heart is made up of multiple layers of tissues and contains many chambers. So starting with the tissue layers, on the outermost layer covering the heart, you have the pericardium, which is this thin protective tissue that's just protecting the heart as a whole. And then on just underneath the pericardium, you have the epicardium, which again provides some protection for the inner layers of the heart and heart wall, but also is producing pericardial fluid, which helps to reduce uh, friction between different heart membranes. And it contains a lot of blood vessels in the wall, which provides um, blood for your heart and heart wall. And you have the myocardium, which is the thickest layer, contains the most amount of muscle, and that's what is contracting and relaxing and contracting and relaxing and basically allowing your heart to pump. Different areas of the heart are going to have different layers of thickness of myocardium because some need to have a little bit more pumping power than other. We'll talk about that in a second. Then finally, the innermost layer that's lining the heart wall is your endocardium. So that is kind of has more blood vessels in it to provide blood there and also protecting and giving a smooth layer to the inside of the heart wall. Now onto the chambers I talked about. A human heart and mammal's hearts have four chambers. So they have two are called atriums and two ventricles. Well, not ventricles, ventricles. <laughs> As kind of one on the left side, that is my right, one on my left side, one on my right side. And then there is a membrane in between the, your two atria, or your atria and left atria and ventricle and right atria and ventricle. And that layer membrane in between is called a septa. Just as like kind of a fun aside, I believe, what is it, birds and reptiles slash amphibians, no, not birds, sorry, reptiles slash amphibians have a three chambered heart. So they have like two ventricles and one atria, I think. And then fish only have a two chambered heart. So they only have one atria and one ventricle. That's pretty crazy. Just different animals have different type hearts, which is cool. So let's talk a little bit more into what these atria and ventricle do. Looking at a diagram of the heart, the atria are going to be the two smaller chambers in the upper portion of the heart, while the ventricles are going to be the two larger chambers at the lower, kind of lower part of the heart. And the right side of your heart is dealing with oxygen, blood that is really oxygen poor. So it's blood incoming from all of like your hands and your fingers and all parts of your body that don't have any oxygen anymore. And the left side of your body is dealing with oxygen rich blood that just came from the lungs and it's pumping all of the oxygen rich blood to all parts of your body to provide them with oxygen. So let's get, let's get a little bit deeper into that and just think about, let's pretend we're like blood coursing through the veins. And we have just come into the right ventricle from the superior and inferior, inferior vena cava. So the, the superior and inferior vena cava are two veins, veins carry blood back towards the heart that are major blood, major veins that carry blood into the heart from the rest of your body. So we are oxygen poor blood that has come into our right atria. From there, we are pumped into the right ventricle. And then from the right ventricle, we get pumped through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. So arteries are pumping blood away from the heart and pulmonary in this case means lungs. So it's pumping the blood into the lungs. Into the, our, in the blood vessel surrounding our lungs, when we breathe in, one second, we are intaking oxygen, the oxygen is going to our lungs, and the lungs transfer that oxygen from the lung tissue into the blood vessel surrounding the lungs. Now we have oxygen rich blood. So now that oxygen rich blood is brought to the left side of our atria. It's full of oxygen, it's super happy, super pumped and it's in the left side of our atria. So now our oxygen rich blood gets pumped from the left side of the atria into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle all the way out into all the different parts of our body where we need to have oxygen in our bloodstream. 
And that cycle repeats over and over and over again, 24 seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year, all the time. Because we always need oxygen and our heart is always pumping to provide it to us. Your body gets electrical impulses that tell your heart when it should contract and what rate it should contract at to continue to pump blood throughout your body. These are controlled by something called a node. And these specialized nodal tissues are found in the right atria. And they're almost like a combination of like a muscular tissue and a nervous tissue. But it's really kind of cool system. So first you have a sinoatrial node, which sends a signal to your atria telling it, hey, time to contract and send blood from the atria into the ventricle. Then from there, the signal can travel to the atrioventricular in atrioventricular goodness, node, which tells your ventricles to then plump, plump, pump it from the ventricle to the rest of your body. And they do this all with really precise timing to make sure that the atria has pumped, oh my gosh, the atria has pumped blood into the ventricle before the ventricle tries to pump blood throughout the rest of your body. Imagine if something misfired, the signal misfired or got miscommunicated and your ventricle tried to pump blood that wasn't there because it hadn't arriven, arose, arrived yet from the atria. It's all very precise electrical timing that your heart has to do every day. Our bodies are truly amazing. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and getting to learn a little bit more about the heart and circulatory system, the powerhouse of our body that pumps blood day after day throughout our body to allow us to have oxygen to all of our tissues. It's a very important organ and works to help keep us healthy and alive. Today's fun fact we're gonna rate is that the heart can beat up to 100,000 beats per day. Crazy number, all to keep us alive and it just keeps doing that day after day. It's good for you, heart. <laughs> Please be sure to drop the rating for the fun fact in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, tell your friends all the newfound knowledge you have about the circulatory system and heart, because well, why not? Uh, follow me on Instagram. I post videos on YouTube every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciency. Hi everyone, Brianna Ding here. <laughs> Hi everyone, Brianna. Important muscles in our body and makes up part of our muscular system. The muscular system for our, the human, large work horses so it constantly has to pump blood and that allows words are huh. so today's fun fact that we're going to rate is that the heart beats up to 100,000 times per day that is a lot of times sometimes I think mine beats a little more than that <laughs>